Now we're going to talk about equilibrium flame temperature. Before we had, in the previous chapter, adiabatic flame temperature. So in review, we had a reactor and we brought in some fuel, typically air, to mix with it. All of this came in at 298 Kelvin, 1 ATM. And what came out were the products. And they came out hot at the temperature adiabatic flame. This was insulated, there's no work, hence it was the highest temperature coming out. And we calculated it where the products were. If you're burning a hydrocarbon fuel, the carbon goes into the CO2 and the hydrogen of the hydrocarbon fuel goes to H2O. And then air nitrogen goes along. Typically, you quote the adiabatic flame temperature for 100% theoretical air. You don't have excess or deficient air. It's perfect amount of air, just the right amount. What's the difference now with the equilibrium flame temperature? Well, we still have a reactor. The reactor is well insulated. We still bring in the same fuel. We still bring in the same amount of 100% theoretical air. We still bring it in at 298 Kelvin and 1 ATM. All of this is the same. I should put 100% theoretical. We do have products come out, but the products are at a lower temperature, the equilibrium flame temperature. That temperature is less. Why? Well, it tries to make it all into CO2, but CO2 can disassociate into CO and O2. And it tries to go all into water, but the water can disassociate also in the hydrogen as well as oxygen. And the hydrogen that's there could similarly disassociate into just H and then maybe recombine with something else. And the nitrogen could disassociate just into ends. So these are like the primary, whoops, I should leave this guy off the list of the primary, primary products, but you get some others because of disassociation. And these, when you take a look at the disassociation equation, CO2, CO plus one half O2, that equation is endothermic. What does that mean, endothermic? It consumes energy or it takes energy, right? It doesn't produce or release heat. The disassociation of CO2 took some of that thermal energy which made the products hot and keeps it into a chemical form instead of an uh, internal energy form of hot gases. All these other reactions that I wrote down like H2O is to H2 plus one half O2, that's endothermic. Another way to look at it is if I had CO, I could actually put that into a reactor as if it's fuel and burn it and it would be, release heat. So it's like this is uncombusted, uncombusted part or partially combusted. The hydrogen is a great fuel, right? It's just very expensive. We don't use much of it, but you can combust hydrogen. And when NASA wants to throw a rocket up, that's what blowing out the back of those uh, rocket engines. They have pure oxygen, pure hydrogen, and mix and burn, and woof, you have a great thrust. It's just expensive fuel. So this is still like a fuel. So there's a couple ways to think about it, that you still have the disassociations endothermic, so it takes some of the heat away, so that keeps the product temperature lower. Or you could think of, hey, there's still some ability to combust. There's still some fuels left in the product that can combust and release more heat. The bottom line is the equilibrium flame temperature is less than the adiabatic flame temperature. Can we calculate that equilibrium flame temperature? Glad you asked. Let's do it by solving a problem.